New research is showing that people with traumatic brain injuries are at higher risk of suicide or suicidal thoughts. I spoke to two people right here in South Carolina who face this, and they want others to know there is help available. I have to drive. I have to be in control. So it doesn't matter if it's an eight hour drive, I'm gonna be driving the whole time. Luke Bonnenberger says he feels anxious anytime he's in a car. If I saw a ladder coming off of, uh, or sitting in a truck, if I felt anything, I would need to get out of that car. We could be going 70 miles per hour and all of a sudden I'm trying to open the back door. A car crash eight years ago is still affecting him. Seeing the scar is sort of just a reminder of where I've been to where I am. He was the passenger in Greenville County when a ladder fell from another vehicle. Luke says he wasn't wearing a seatbelt and was thrown from the car. I was immediately rushed to the hospital and put through one of the world's most dangerous surgeries, which is a craniotomy, which is the removal of part of your skull in order to help with the swelling of the brain. To everyone's surprise, he made a great physical recovery. I was walking, I was talking, I was, you know, the recovery was phenomenal. But his mental health took a dark turn. He started to have thoughts of suicide. And then I had a knife to my throat and I don't know what my stepdad said, but when my stepdad got there, he said his kind words. Uh, eventually, I was taken to the hospital and I admitted myself into Marshall Pickens. Luke received treatment and made a recovery, but Carly Sims from Columbia says her boyfriend wasn't so lucky. His family asked we don't reveal his name. He originally was supposed to go and play for, I believe it was a D1 school um, that he was planning on going and playing football for. And then he ended up having too many concussions, um, so they wouldn't let him go and play. And I think they said that he had six on record, but he thought that he actually had had about 10 to 12 concussions just from high school. They started dating after high school in their 20s. He never really showed any signs that I was aware of, of having issues from that. Um, he mentioned that he had some short-term memory loss every now and then, but other than that, um, he never really thought that it bothered him. But suddenly something changed. Even like in the car ride home, he was completely normal. And then it was just like a different person got out of the car. She was on the phone in the other room calling his mom in 911 when he died by suicide. I don't even really remember the first three months after it happened. Um, it was kind of like I was just surviving. I wasn't actually, you know, living or there. I was just kind of just surviving. Sims says her boyfriend never saw a doctor or therapist about his concussions from high school, so she can't say for sure they are associated with his suicide. But Prisma Health neurologist Matthew Shretner says they are learning a lot more about the emotional side effects of brain injuries. Very often when someone has a head injury, there are obvious physical issues, uh, headaches, nausea that uh, initially take the forefront of attention. But emotional dysregulation, depression, anxiety, all of which are common problems associated with TBI, can be even more pervasive and more disruptive for life. One recent study published in the Journal of Athletic Training examined high school athletes who suffered concussions and how many had suicidal thoughts or died by suicide. They uh, were able to determine or able to see a pattern that not only do concussions seem to increase risk of depression and suicidality, but that number of concussions also plays a significant role, something to be aware of in, uh, for instance, youth sports. Shretner says whether it's a brain injury as serious as Luke's or concussions on the sports field, he encourages all of these patients to be aware of their mental health. We as a society and in medicine certainly are becoming more insightful and more open to the the mood or psychiatric roles in brain disorders. Luke says there is one quote that keeps him going. And the quote is that suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. But he says with proper support and help, your life can change. That's my daughter, Elena. She'll be turning three this year, this coming year. And that's my wife, Jenny. And they're expecting a second soon. It's important to know that what you're going through right now, what you're struggling with right now, isn't what's going to reflect five years, 10 years, seven. It, it might take a while. It's not just important, it's imperative because it's never a waste of time to seek help when it depends on life or death.
Luke says he joined a support group and that talking to others who also experienced brain injuries really helped him recover. He has now started an organization called Luke Speaks, where he coaches and helps others battling similar circumstances. Carrie Beal, Fox Carolina News.